Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equilinox. In the last episode, the snow reached the very first mountains of our world, and we placed a couple of little sheep on top too. They have a few grass tufts to keep them full, and they honestly seem to be thriving here. But what we really want to do is grow the holly bush, because that should help us grow some goats over there too. So in the last episode, we actually set up some berry bushes up here, and I'm pretty sure it's done evolving now. We did have the holly bush, but it must have passed away out here. Yeah, the top of the mountain isn't very fertile right now, so it probably just wasn't able to survive. It must have ended up passing away very, very quickly, in fact. So I guess what we should do is search for it inside this menu. It was just called the holly bush, right? There we go, a three-star plant. A small bush which grows in snowy areas. This bush produces small red edible berries, which is great for animals living in the snowy biomes. This is one of the only food sources that can survive at high altitudes. And that's why we need it for our sheep, too. So let's make sure that we have a good place for it here. All it needs is rocks and stones. And it produces those fruits that can be eaten by animals. Excellent. So that means we should be able to just place it down right here. A 100% environment factor. Yeah, I think our sheep are going to be pretty happy with this. We might as well place down a few of them. Since we have so many sheep, they are going to have an overload of food pretty soon. But it's still better than not having enough. And right now it looks like... Oh no! It looks like Prince is struggling to find food. This was the sheep that we were hoping to use to evolve our goats. So thank goodness he managed to find one little grass tuft. Well, don't worry, little guy. Pretty soon you are going to have so many berries to pick from these bushes. And I guess your goat friends will too. So if we can find him hopping around here again... There you are. I think we're going to use you to finally evolve the goat. Hopefully he's going to last long enough to finish it off. It does look like he's getting pretty old. But it looks like he also has a couple of little babies here who could probably take up the job too. Oh, Prancer the sheep. That is terribly fitting for the mountains. One of you had the great idea to call these guys the Winter Woolies, which I thought was just so cute. So Prince and Prancer of the Winter Woolies are going to be very, very happy here soon. Ah, it looks like we have our very first berries on the holly bushes. Well, I hope you guys are going to enjoy them. In fact, are you coming over here for a taste? It looks like Rolex may have munched on a little bit of the berries. Oh, Prancer, you're starving too! Well, there's food all around you now, little one, so you can take your pick. And while we're waiting for our goats to evolve, maybe we should move down the slopes a little bit? We're actually trying to spread our lush biome a little bit more, right down the hill here into the valley, because I think this is probably where we're going to try to set up our bamboo forest. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Our bears. Look at how our bears have thrived in our absence. Oh, we have another little baby bear over here. I noticed when I was taking the thumbnail pictures for the previous episode that Jazz had actually had a baby. And I believe that this one is probably the one. Dragster the bear? Well, you're all grown up now. And I guess Jazz has had another baby in the process too, Julius the bear. Some very imposing names, which I guess is what they need because these bees can be pretty relentless. We're actually thinking that we should probably place a couple more of the beehives down. That way there will be more honey to go around. Because with three bears in this tiny space, and the ducks too, this honey is going to run out pretty quickly. So we place down some poppies to make the honey a little bit safer to gather, and so far it seems to be working. I haven't seen any of our bears get stung yet. I mean, granted, our health is a little bit low. Was that actually a 63 on poor Jazz's health? Oh, there he goes. Now he's getting stung again. So a few of the bees haven't been properly sedated by these poppy flowers. But that only means we should place down a few more. So I guess we'll call these our sleepy meadows. Because basically any creature that we place in here who might have a taste for the flowers of the world are going to find themselves pretty sleepy when they're roaming around. You know, the poppies dying off might actually be because this land isn't quite fertile enough. Oh, and there's our coat too, excellent. Yeah, I think we need to add a couple more plants in here that would make this place more of a woodland biome. 
I'm pretty sure that's where the poppies thrive. That's where we have our specially colored poppies, after all. These green things. Maybe we should even consider transplanting a few of them over here. We could have a whole rainbow of poppies waiting for the bees. But if our goat is done, let's go see our first little baby goat. Oh my goodness, a baby goat among sheep. Do you have little spots on you? Oh, that is adorable. One giant white spot right on his side. And he loves these holly berries, of course. So you're probably going to really enjoy it up here too. Well, let's read about the goat, just to make sure it's a suitable place. The goat species enjoys living in high altitudes and has a diet of small plants and fruit. Although scared of predators, the goat will fight back when attacked. It also sometimes rams into nearby fruit trees, knocking all of the fruit off the tree. Oh my gosh, seriously? Wait a second. Is there a way for us to put the goats near our apple trees? I mean, we already have the potato party in full effect over here, and look at this. Oh my gosh, nobody is cleaning up after the party. There are so many potatoes on the ground and apples everywhere. Maybe you guys need a few more party goers to help you out. That is a little bit ridiculous. But I seriously want to see one of these goats just knock down every last one of the apples on the trees. Well, what sort of biomes do they prefer then? They like higher altitudes? But is the snowy biome going to be the only suitable place? Well, it looks like they like grasslands, forests, woodlands too. They like trees and they like large rocks. So we would just have to make sure that they have large rocks in the area, because pretty much every inch of this place is covered in trees anyways. Oh my goodness, I didn't even notice that. Look how many of these tall trees we have. Oh, it is like an army of tall trees. Wasn't it this tree over here? The Acer tree, who really hates the tall trees. Oh, there's a one lone Acer tree and its sapling sun. See you against the world, buddy. But yeah, I want to see if maybe we can place some goats over here, too. We even have some little sheepy friends for them, so they won't feel too out of place. I guess first we should just place this goat down right on top of the hill, though. Our very first goat deserves to be right in the middle of the winter woolies. Clover the goat. Oh, an adorable name for our first goat. Are you okay? Oh, is she just settling down to sleep? Oh, that scared me for a moment. Yeah, I guess our goats are just as sleepy as the sheep are, too. Well, good to know. The goats are also going to get plenty of rest and relaxation when the nighttime comes. So yeah, let's see if this is just as suitable of a biome. Alright, it looks like we don't have any large rock species out here. Is there any place down here where we do? Way down here by our boars, I think. But of course, that's a little bit too low to make them happy. So I guess that means we're just going to have to place a couple of large rocks over here. And I'm sure everything else will be fine with that, right? We have an apple tree right here with some sparrows inside. Let's place a few of the large rocks right in this area. Then the goats can frolic around happily. Here you go, little one. With your little sparrow friends as neighbors. Granted, they're all in their eggs right now. So our little goat baby is going to have baby sparrows to keep them company. Mischief the goat! Oh, of course! When he comes over here to ram these apples off the tree, he is probably going to rattle these poor little baby sparrows right out of their nest. Well, that's one way to teach them the flying, I guess. And this guy is already hightailing out of here. He's like, nope, nope, I am not waiting around to see what mischief the goat has in store for my family. Is there anything that we can do with the goats? Or was that the last part of their evolution tree? There you are, Clover. Yeah, it looks like there's nothing else that we can evolve the goats into, but we can change their colors. And that's always one of my favorite things to do. So we have beige, dark brown, black, and white. Ooh, some white mountain goats? That might be pretty nice, especially up here with all the snow. Though they would blend in so well, they would probably be hard for us to pick out. Maybe we want to choose something different then. They look so gorgeous, though, especially when they're fully grown like this. With those white spots on their fur. Oh, and another little baby goat, too. Pork chops the baby goat. Really, now? We can do a little bit better than that. 
Have we completed any tasks for all of those things? I believe there was something about the holly bush here. Yeah, we just need some goats to eat the holly bushes, and it looks like we're just about halfway there. Ooh, then we're going to unlock the fox. Ooh, maybe we'll see our very first fox today, too. That's pretty exciting. Well, until that task is done... Oh my goodness. Four bears in the world now. Four gigantic lumbering bears. Well, the poppies seem to be doing a little bit better. So let's go ahead and maybe create one more of these hives. Hopefully there will be enough poppies to sustain these bees too. But as it is right now, the honey industry seriously needs to expand. Now let's go ahead and start spreading our lush biome a bit more too. It really has been struggling. Even though we have these beautiful flowers here to make this land more fertile, it's a very small area right now. So what I would like to do is actually start spreading the lush biome into this land as well. If we can. It looks like it's not quite healthy enough. I did want it to touch base with our autumn forest though. I feel like that's going to look really nice. Between all of these maple trees as they fall straight down. All right, thanks for the vote of confidence. Something must be a little bit off about that area, but I'm sure we can figure out how to fix it. Now, we didn't unlock the bamboo yet, did we? I'm pretty sure that that was something we had to evolve from our primroses, right? Yeah, looks like we're going to need tall mushrooms and a pretty low altitude too. But down here ought to be enough. Yeah, this is very, very low. So that's why we wanted to place our bamboo down here anyways. This will be like a secluded little corner for the shyest of our animals. Though I do wish we had some pandas to place inside. I'm not really sure if the bears are going to enjoy the lush biome. I mean, I guess we could always try. We would definitely have to make sure that they had plenty of honey to eat over here too, because the bamboo is just not going to cut it for them. But as far as the tall mushrooms go, is that something that we've unlocked yet? Nope, it looks like it evolves from the red mushroom. And we're going to need to change the color over to pink and place it in a lush biome. Okay. We actually have the red mushrooms over by the swamp biome. And wait a second, this is going to spread the swamp biome here. We are going to have like a literal stain of swampiness way down here in the valley. That's a little bit worrying. I mean, granted, we could probably just get rid of it once we have the tall mushrooms that we need. We could easily delete these red mushrooms with the eraser tool. So I guess it won't be so bad. It'll look a little bit strange at first, but it's all for the greater good. The question is, is the red mushroom going to be able to even survive here? Yeah, let's see if we can find it inside our menu. The red mushroom... Well, it looks to be pretty good. I'm sure it would be able to thrive pretty easily. Yeah, 100% right here. All we need to do is make sure that we change the colors straight over to pink. And cross our fingers that that's not going to be too expensive. Well, it is the most expensive on the list, but it looks like we can handle that. So, pink, red mushrooms. And all for the sake of bamboo. Is that you, Mischief the Goat? I think it might be. And it looks like you have... Tons of baby goats. Oh my gosh, I thought you only had one baby. Look at all of these babies! Keisha the baby goat, Doodles the baby goat, Dancer the baby goat. Mischief, you have been busy. It must be all of those delicious apples. Have you guys knocked them all out of the tree yet? This poor baby sparrow seems stunned. Yeah, something tells me he's seen some things. I would love to see it in action, though. There aren't too many apple trees up here in their area. Just these right over here, right next to our sheep, too. Oh, now the sheep guardians are going to take on a whole new meaning, guarding their apple trees from those mischievous goats. Ooh, she's on the move now. Are you going for it? Oh, yes! An explosion of apples. One apple for each of her little babies. Well, plenty of apples for each of her babies. These goats are going to grow huge in absolutely no time at all. Well, I'm glad that our goats are really thriving out here. I guess that means we can place them in more places than we thought. As long as we have the fruit to sustain them. 
and it looks like our mountaineering quest is finally done. Oh, look at this. Goats and sheep living side by side. They all look happy as can be. So the mountaineering task is officially done, and that means we have unlocked the fox for our snowy biome. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to place the fox in here. A sly fox. This animal has a lovely orange coat and hunts for small mammals. During the hunt, the fox will attempt to catch a small animal and will then carry its meat back to the home for the rest of the foxes to feed from. Oh, so it's almost like the fox is hunting for the pack in a way? Do foxes live in groups? I always figured foxes were solitary animals. That's interesting though. It looks like they hunt chickens and small herbivores. They also like trees, so we'd have to make sure they live inside a forest of some sort. Very, very interesting. And they'll fight back when they're attacked by another animal. So we probably want to make sure that we don't place them too close to our bears. Yeah, I don't think these five big giant bears would be too happy to see a fox stealing into their honey industry. I mean, we could place them somewhere close to our blue chickens but I'm a little bit worried that they're going to end up completely demolishing this group right here. I believe the developer mentioned that the animals won't actually go hunting if it means that they're going to destroy the last of a species. So they might be okay here? I mean, I guess just as a test, we could place them down and see if our blue chickens can outrun them. These chickens were supposed to be the speediest of the bunch. 2.6, 2.4... We did slack off on them a little bit, so I guess this is going to be our very first experiment. Little Fox, what do you think about this land right here? An environment of about 95%? And 100% way over here by this lone birch tree? Well, it sounds like this is a pretty good place for you then. We'll place you a little bit closer to the rest of the trees though, just because I'm afraid that once this birch tree disappears, you're probably going to be pretty upset. Now, are you going to be okay living right next to the sheep? That's a good question. I would hate to see our very first original sheep die off. Oh, but look at this little baby fox kit. Every time the baby animals get me every single time. Well, you're all off on your own, little guy. You're going to have to try to take down one of these chickens all by yourself. And honestly, it looks like he's going straight for it. Oh my goodness straight up that hill. Distracted by the egg, unfortunately. Oh, it seems like your first hunt may have been a failure. Sweet be the fox. Oh, could we have asked for a sweeter name than that? Well, I hope you're going to be able to find something soon because you don't have a parent to help you find food. And it looks like that hunger is going down pretty quickly, too. Well, you try it again, little one. We'll be watching right over your shoulder. Some of the chickens have returned, too, so now's your chance. You could go after this one right here, Dodger the Blue Chicken. You are one brave chicken, coming right up to see our fox. Oh, Billy, this is the end for you. One of the baby chickens, too. Well, I guess our fox knows you gotta go for the weak links. How on earth did you get a chicken leg that big from Billy? That chicken leg is practically bigger than our baby fox. Oh, I see. Just carrying it straight into the middle of our sheep. Flaunting your victory right in between them. You are going to scare our sheep half to death. Well, at least Sweet Pea seems to be enjoying herself. And that's interesting, too. So I guess if Sweet Pea had some babies she would bring the meat straight back to them so they could eat too. This is actually our first look at how the predators function in Equilinox. The predators who would go out hunting for different animals, at least. I know we have the bears and they can get pretty aggressive too, but so far we haven't had too much trouble. And I think that's because the only other animal out here is really just the duck, and Ted isn't out here looking for any trouble. Well, that's pretty cool. We'll have to come back here later and see if our fox has had any babies. See if our fox family has started to grow. Oh, and before we leave, let's also see if maybe we can do anything else with the fox. Oh, we can evolve the fox into the wolf. Seriously? We just need snowy rocks nearby, the gray fur color. 
That probably means we'd have to place the fox up in the mountains. Oh, that is going to be so cool. Big, giant wolves in the world. I bet they would probably go after the sheep for sure. So we can change the fox into some pretty interesting colors, too. Gray, of course, brown, beige, white, but also ruby red, light blue, and the lilac. Oh, almost two million points for lilac, but that would be pretty fantastic. We can even place the fox inside the lush biome, so maybe lilac foxes would be perfect for a lush world. Um, you know what we didn't do? We didn't actually take a look at the fox tasks. It looks like one of them was fox hunting. Not all animals in Equilinox are cute and cuddly. Some of them are vicious beasts that feast on the blood of their prey. The foxes need to eat meat, so place them in an area with chickens or other suitable small creatures so they can go hunting. Oh, and speaking of chickens? It looks like we've had another mutation in our chicken army. Oh, a different color? Something other than blue. I'm so used to the blue chickens now. I wonder what this one could possibly be. Dark purple. Oh, our chickens are going to the dark side. They have had enough of our foxes already and they're ready to fight back. It seems like the dark forest has gotten a hold of them. Very, very interesting. Was our little dark chicken going to hatch? Oh my gosh, the Dark Overlord himself, or herself as it was. Brittany the Dark Lord, nice to meet you, Brittany. I'm sure you'll be whipping all these little chickens into shape in no time. Let's go ahead and selective breed her. I mean, while I would hate to lose all of our blue chickens, we might have to pick one up and plant it somewhere else just to make sure that it survives. I definitely want to see these dark chickens thrive too. Oh, and look at all these little baby foxes now. Oh, the fox family is growing at a rapid rate, and I'm sure it's because of all of that gigantic meat that their mother is bringing back for them. The bird meat is looking pretty low right now, though. It's definitely shrunk in size, so I'm sure she's going to be ready to go hunting pretty soon again. In fact, you're firstborn over here. Time looks like he's ready to go hunting himself. Your tiny little baby right under your feet is a bit more skittish. Valinto? Oh, he is a sweetheart, but he's going to have to learn how to be brave. You can't catch any chickens if you're always under your mom's feet, after all. And speaking of which... Oh my goodness, all of the goats have grown up too. Dancer just like your mother. Your mother, Mischief. I wonder if maybe Mischief may have passed away by now. Yeah, it looks like all of her babies are grown up. So something tells me Mischief may have unfortunately passed due to old age. They always go so quick in Equilinox, it's hard to get attached to them. But it's pretty clear that they're living their best lives on these hills. So in the next episode, maybe we'll finally bring some life to our lush biome. I might do a little bit of maintenance on this area. Oh, excellent. I almost forgot about these. It looks like our pink mushrooms are ready. So that means our primroses should be able to evolve the bamboo. But only if we can find one that isn't about to pass away. Yeah, we'll just have to place the tall mushrooms nearby. So let's go ahead and quickly evolve those two. I think it's about time that our lush biome finally saw some life of its own. Even if it's just little rainbow lizards skittering around in the trees. It is going to look fantastic there. With our winter woolly neighbors to keep them company. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!